It's one of the most unique and polarizing science fiction films ever made. Released in 2009, the film took the concept of racial segregation and turned it on its head by setting the story in a country which was notorious for that very practice. Yes, we're talking about District 9, and this is Sign 5. The film was inspired by events which occurred within District 6 in Cape Town in the 1970s, with ideas and concepts taken from director Neil Blomkamp's short film Alive in Joburg. Set in South Africa, the film explores a unique variation of apartheid, which the country was globally notorious for, whereby both black and white South Africans unite to turn their distrust, hatred and prejudice against a third race, in this case an alien species who arrived as refugees in a spaceship over Johannesburg in 1982. In the almost 30 years which have since passed, the aliens have grown in number whilst collectively living in a massive slum called District 9. As a consequence of being in close proximity to human neighbourhoods, along with them breaking laws and generally being a social nuisance, the government has enlisted a large private organisation called Multinational United, also known as MNU, to forcibly relocate the entire alien ghetto into a new area further away from the city called District 10. One of the film's core strengths, and the reason it's so unique, is its production style. With the start of the film produced as if it's a documentary, the viewer quickly becomes convinced that what they're seeing is real and the events on the screen actually occurred. By taking this unorthodox approach, the film accurately highlights the issue any country would experience having to deal with a million aliens suddenly appearing in their skies overnight. Compounding the issue further is the aliens are loathed by the country's human population as they use valuable resources normally reserved for them. Now films featuring aliens having to live in a human world are not a new concept, with the best example being the Alien Nation TV and movie series from the 1980s. However, what makes District 9 more intense is that the aliens don't speak any human languages and they're unable to integrate into human society. Central to the story are the two main protagonists, Vickers van der Merwe, portrayed by Charlotte Copley, and the alien Christopher Johnson, played by Jason Cope both of whom not only go on an extraordinary individual journey throughout the film, but also a fascinating one together. In the documentary portion of the film, an uncaring, unsympathetic and career-minded Vickers leads the MNU mission in relocating the District 9 inhabitants, whilst the film itself subtly morphs from a documentary into a movie with a more traditional narrative. Adding additional intrigue to the story are the various characters appearing throughout the film, which includes those humans who find joy in tormenting the aliens, other humans who exploit them for money, along with crime organisations who are attempting to utilise the aliens' highly advanced weaponry, which humans are simply unable to use due to their genetic biological differences. For their part, the aliens themselves are their own individuals where conforming to the human way simply holds no appeal to them. One of the strengths of the film is the design of the aliens. Now in most movies a friendly and benevolent alien, though looking foreign, can still have a somewhat attractive aesthetic to humans, whilst aggressive aliens are far more frightening and grotesque. Yet in District 9 you effectively have half of one and half of the other. The aliens do look intimidating, they do look scary, yet they aren't a threat to humanity. For that reason they are effectively a cinematic contradiction, and that's the reason why they work so well. Under the outstanding direction of Neil Blomkamp, and the great musical score by Clinton Shorter, the film is a sobering look at how society reacts to an extraterrestrial situation it doesn't want and can't control. So who should see the film? As a case study of what could happen if refugee aliens suddenly arrived on Earth, this film should be viewed by as many people as possible. However, there is a somewhat darker and more violent side to the movie, particularly as some sequences are quite gruesome and contain emotionally disturbing moments, so it's definitely not suitable for children. When it was first released, the film effectively came out of nowhere and instantly struck a chord with audiences, critics and fans alike, which resulted in four Academy Award nominations, including one for Best Picture. Aside from demonstrating a highly realistic example of xenophobic speciesism, what gives the film its authentic appearance is the fact it was actually filmed in Soweto, in a poverty-stricken neighbourhood. For this reason alone, it becomes easier to relate to the oppressive conditions people live in, which actually exist in real life. So if you haven't seen the film before, then you're in for a treat, especially the film's first hour, which really will make you think, what if this happened in my city? This coupled with some fantastic casting, outstanding visual effects, wonderful production design, and a really unique concept is the reason why this film is well worth watching. <laughs>